live okay 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 sure. very good afternoon to everyone very good afternoon to everyone those who have joined today for a very interesting webinar in order to understand the deep learning uh, which has bring uh, which has brought some new dimensions in medical imaging today we have uh, dr sandeep singh sanger with us he is a post doctoral research fellow in the machine learning section of computer science department of university of copenhagen denmark he has more than 9 years of academic and research experience at the reputed places he has done his mtech from uh, in information security from mnit allahabad india and holds a phd degree from iit dhanbad dr sanger uh, current research interests include medical image segmentation motion segmentation visual object tracking object recognition and video compression his broader research in interests include machine learning computer vision image video processing and its related applications he has published several research articles in reputed international journals and conferences in the field of computer vision and image processing he also filed patent and submitted research projects in different research organization he has served as a reviewer of several reputed international transactions journals and conferences which includes ieee transactions on systems man and cybernetics systems pattern recognition neurocomputing and optic so uh, dr sanger we are really uh, obliged to see you here with us and we are really eager to listen your talk now it's over to you thank you very much for joining us yeah thank you sir thank you sir for your uh, nice nice introduction uh, so let's start with the talk first of all uh, good afternoon to all of you for india and nepal and good morning to all of you for the uh, denmark and other country people so today's talk title is deep learning brings a new dimension to medical imaging so as per the title of this talk Uh, we will discuss about the medical imaging and how we are going to apply deep learning techniques in this medical imaging field so let's start uh, with the image as uh, some students are also there they might uh, not have a, like uh, familiar with the image what is the image data uh, image or image data set so uh, if we we'll talk about the definition of image then image is a two dimensional intensity function we can say just like image is a matrix two dimension matrix f x comma y where uh, x comma y are the spatial coordinates spatial positions and if we we'll talk about the f x comma y then it represent the particular intensity value where f represent the complete image so if we we'll talk about the digital image means we are storing the image in a computer so uh, how we can store we store in terms of intensity values so these values vary from 0 to 255 if we are talking about the 0 then it will be near to black or black and if you are talking about the 255 or near about value of 255 then it will represent the white so like uh, here there is one example how we are going to represent the particular image so if this is 128 then uh, like it will be like just like a gray scale and uh, it is like if you talk about the 255 then uh, it will be white here you can see the pixel so in this way we can represent a particular image now image may be a different type earlier we have seen this this is this was a gray scale image the uh, image may be a color image so one type of color image is uh, red green blue means uh, like this is the combination of three channels red channel green channel and b channel and we are going to combine all these three channels then it will make a rgb image or colorful image now uh, let's uh, introduce about the video video is uh, nothing just like a collection of images but if you are talking in terms of video then image is called a frame so video is a collection of frames or we can say video is the temporal sequence of frames like x and y are the resolution of a particular image and t is the temporal dimension means in the temporal dimension we are going to combine all these images now today's topic is medical imaging so whatever operations we are going to apply on medical imaging means whatever content we are interpreting from the medical imaging that's the part of computer vision so let's 
take an introduction of computer vision. In front of you, there is a one very beautiful picture. So, uh, and there is a one famous quote. Uh, one picture is more than thousands uh, of words. Many of uh, most of you know about this quote. So, in this quote, uh, what is the meaning of this quote? You will understand from this image, like what you can see in this image. Like beautiful colors are there, beautiful sky is there, hill is there, green area is there, and two tractors are there, small village is there. So, like lots of things we can interpret from this image. Who we are? We are the human being. What I'm doing? Uh, I'm interpreting the content from the image. If same task is done by the computer, then it is called the computer vision. So, definition of computer vision is interpreting the content from image or the video data set. So, one application of this image data set is medical imaging. Now, just uh, start with the introduction of deep learning. I'm not going much in the details of all these uh, because uh, today's talk uh, should be focused on the medical imaging. So uh, just before understanding the deep learning, we will start with the artificial intelligence. Now, uh, like most of the people, if you are especially in the computer science or in an engineering department, then you know this term artificial intelligence. Uh, every uh, third and fourth persons are using artificial intelligence in some way. So what is that artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence means uh, like uh, simulating the human behavior, like machine is working just like a human, then it, it will be called as an artificial intelligence. Next, uh, one sub part of artificial intelligence is machine learning. Machine learning means learning from the experience learning from the data set, then it is called machine learning. And then in a machine learning, there's a one technique, a technique is called deep learning. And there are lots of techniques, but one is the deep learning. So in deep learning, what we are doing, uh, deep learning is inspired from artificial neural network. Right? So uh, like it is inspired from uh, human brain, and uh, we can say it is a subfield of machine learning concerned with algorithm inspired by structure and function of brain called artificial neural network. So what we are doing with this deep learning and machine learning techniques, we need to find the model. We need to find the algorithm from this uh, deep learning or machine learning techniques. If we are especially talking about the deep learning, then if we have a large amount of data set, then it will perform well. It will perform, the performance will be high. So uh, right now uh, there is uh, like uh, like lots of data are available uh, from social media and from other resources. So there is uh, like uh, there is a demand of deep learning. Like due to large amount of data set, there is a demand of deep learning. Like if you are talking about the Facebook uh, now, right now too much popular social media uh, platform. In a Facebook, we do quite lots of uh, algorithms, lots of uh, techniques the, by which we can predict the human behavior, what kinds of content they want to see. So deep learning gives the answer. And on Facebook, what it is there, like lots of data we have, millions of billions of people are using the Facebook, right? So in the same way, deep learning came into the picture and it is most popular. This is the reason deep learning is most popular because uh, it works for large amount of data set. Now, uh, next point is, uh, what is the difference between machine learning techniques and deep learning techniques? Machine learning, deep learning is just like machine learning. Yeah, there is a one little difference. Like, suppose this is an input image. If you, uh, if you are applying the machine learning techniques, then this is the input image. We are going to extract the features from this input image. Then, who, who will extract the feature, particular human being, programmer, or, or like data scientist uh, will extract the features from this one. Then to this feature, on this feature, we will apply some classification techniques. So here uh, we can apply SVM, artificial neural network, and KNN. And, and after applying the classification techniques, we'll predict whether it is a car or not car. But if we are talking about the deep learning techniques, deep learning is an end-to-end -end approach. End to end means just we are giving raw image input and we are generating the output. We no need to worry about the feature extraction or classification, just deep learning will take care of all these things. 
Now, one technique of deep learning is convolutional neural network. Of course, there are uh, lots of architecture, lots of techniques uh, of convolutional neural network uh, of deep learning, but convolutional neural network uh, is uh, basically for the image data set. We are today, today's talk is for medical imaging, so we need to understand this convolutional neural network. So, this is the deep learning algorithm which takes an image as an input and assign weights and bias. So like these weights and bias, we need to learn from the image uh, data set. And uh, like in deep learning, we say, in machine learning, we say we are training a model. We are so like finding the model. What is the term this finding the model? Means we are finding the learned model. Yes, we are finding the learned weights and biases. So that those weights and biases will be used for other unknown data sets. Why? So like uh, in CNN, we are going to find the weights and bias using different uh, like mechanism. And a lack of less pre-processing is required for this convolution neural network. And why we are using CNN over this uh, neural network? We, we know uh, we already have a neural network architecture. Then why we are using CNN or other deep learning models? Then one important point is CNN operates on volume, vector, image, or matrix in any dimension. You, you uh, I think most of you are familiar with. Uh, uh, you are familiar with uh, like uh, artificial neural network. So if you are applying artificial neural network on particular image, then first of all, we need to convert that two dimensional image into the one dimension, fine? So uh, like, but if you are applying the CNN, then no need of conversion. Directly we can, we can apply on the video uh, or we can apply on image or we can apply on any types of matrix, any dimension of matrix. And uh, if you see the other advantage of CNN, then CNN is able to successfully capture the spatial temporal dependency because directly we are applying on the image and video. So uh, like it can capture the spatial temporal dependency image and video data set. And architecture performs better fitting to the image data set due to reduction in number of parameters. So we have less number of parameters in, uh, in uh, CNN as compared to the artificial neural network. And uh, like role of CNN to reduce the image into the form which is easier to process, like uh, like we have a max pooling operations by which we can reduce the image size. And uh, the important when we are designing an architecture, which is not only good at learning features, but also is a scalable to massive data set. Like in a CNN, we have lots of filters. Due to this uh, many filters and uh, like uh, high dimension filters, uh, we can get uh, like features, uh, like we can get low level features or we can get the lots of important features which are useful for uh, predicting the results. Now, uh, let's discuss with one architecture of CNN. Uh, in this architecture, uh, like we have, like in CNN, we have a three main layers. One is the convolution layer, another is max pooling, another is a fully connected layer. So in a convolution layer, uh, what we have, we are going to extract the features. And in max pooling, we are going to reduce the size of image. It is not related to uh, uh, like accuracy of a particular image, but it is related to the complexity of image. Like we are going to reduce the complexity using the max pooling operation. If you are talking about a fully connected layer, in fully connected layer is used for classification purpose, prediction purpose. So this is one uh, architecture of like convolutional neural network. This part uh, detect the features and this part is for classification purpose. Here we have convolution plus ReLU and here we are applying pooling. And so let, first of all, let's discuss about all these layers uh, one by one. So let's start with the convolution one. What is the convolution operation? Suppose this is the original image. In this original image, we are going to apply a particular filter, three cross three filter we are applying. Then uh, filter means like we are overlapping filter on this uh, particular image and element by element we are multiplying like zero cross four we are doing, zero cross zero we are doing. Uh, here you can see this four cross zero, zero cross zero like that. And in last we are adding all. So like we are getting minus eight. And the center pixel value will be replaced by this minus eight. The so same fashion, we will uh, uh, we will shift this window, 
uh, one by one. If stride value is one, then we will shift for one time. If stride value is two, we will shift for two times. So, so same way, we will fill all these complete field nodes. So in this way, we are going to apply the cumulation operations. So let's discuss about how cumulation operations uh, operation work in a particular image. So uh, there's one animation. In this animation, uh, we have one color image of RGB. So this is the red channel, this is the green channel, this is the blue channel. On this RGB image, uh, we are going to apply a particular filter, or we are going to apply the conversion operation using this filter. Now, we need to take care about uh, something here, like uh, this filter size should be equivalent to this channel size. So here, the channel size is three, RGB. So we have this three. Uh, filter size and we can have one bias term and uh, like we are using two filters here one is w0 another is w1 so why we are using two filters and uh, we can use uh, more than one two filter or more than one filter it depends on the particular application for example we want to detect a horizontal image so this filter is going to detect the horizontal image now we would like to uh, know the vertical images also, uh, vertical edges also. So this is going to detect the vertical image, uh, vertical edges. So in the same way, based on the requirements, we can apply the different different filters. And in real life or in real problem, if we have a filter size 64, we have filter size 128 or 256. This this is a small example just uh, to understand. So how we are doing? Just we are applying cumulation operation uh, by taking this three cross three window, and uh, whatever the result will come, and in this uh, result we will add bias, and we will put this term here. In the same way we will shift, and we will put this one here. So uh, like one by one we will fill all these. Uh, uh, like uh, one by one we will apply this operation, and we will fill this matrix. So here the filters uh, number of filters are two. So that's why we have one and two filters uh, we can have. So this is the way we can apply the convolution layer. The task of convolution layer, uh, convolution operation in CNN is to extract the features, to map the features. So here we can say this is the feature map. This is a feature map uh, uh, corresponding to this filter one. These are the feature map corresponding to this filter two. So this is the convolution operation. Now next is max pooling. Uh, in max pooling, what we do, we are going to reduce the size of a particular image. It is not related to the accuracy. It is not related to extracting the feature, but just we need to reduce the complexity. Uh, like uh, somewhere you don't have a sufficient amount of computational resources. So in that case, max pooling will help. So like we have, uh, suppose we have a four cross four filter, then just we will apply four cross four filter, then maximum value it will take from this four cross four filter. Now, if you have a two cross two filter, then we will apply this max pooling in this two cross two dimension, in this two cross two dimension, and we'll get this one. There may be possible like we have an overlapping sub filter. So if you have overlapping two cross two filter, then our size will be this one. And uh, like there is a specific uh, formula, if we have a size N, of image n cross n if you have filter size f cross f then uh, we will have output as n minus f plus one uh, and uh, if we have a padding and stride then this formula will work and last layer is the fully connected layer fully connected layer is just like an artificial neural network technique so quickly i'm going through all these techniques because this uh, this like talk should not be focused on this basic of uh, deep learning or basic of convolutional network so there are different architecture of cnn just like linet we have seen in our earlier slide uh, similar to linet there is lxnet vgnet these are the architecture which we can use directly you might have heard about the transfer learning approach so in transfer learning what we have already existing architecture we can use in our model just by changing the output uh, layer so like uh, i will show you one example i will show you one method using the transfer learning in upcoming slides 
So what is the use of this transfer learning? Why we use uh, transfer learning? Suppose uh, we have a small institutions or, or we have a lack of uh, computational resources, uh, like we don't have a much high power GPU, then, and, but we want to use the deep learning in our model. So this is the way, it means transfer learning is the way to use the deep learning. Like uh, we can apply the uh, learned weight from Linet model, uh, and this learned weight we can use in our but a particular application and it can generate the output without using the much uh, complex operations and without uh, using the much high power for GPU computation resources. So now let, let us start uh, uh, towards the medical imaging. Now we have uh, seen an uh, overview of convolution neural network. Of course, convolution neural network is uh, very famous nowadays, and it produce uh, produce very efficient results. But whenever we are coming towards medical imaging, then in medical imaging to predict a particular disease, we need a precise result. Like we are detecting a cancer tumor. We are finding whether it is a normal tumor or it's a cancer uh, like benign or malignant uh, like that we are going to detect. Then in that case, we need deep features. Uh, but uh, like people are applying convolution neural network also, but sometimes or most of the times CNN fails in that case. So we need to improve the power of CNN. So by improving the power of CNN, uh, or like result of improving the power of CNN is the unit model. Unit is just uh, unit is also a CNN model, but here we are uh, using lots of uh, filters and lots of other operations, convolution operations, and uh, lots of max pooling and other operations we are using. This architecture is called unit. Why? Because the shape of this architecture is just like a U. If you see in the left side, this is called the encoder. If you see in the right side, this is called the decoder. In the encoder side, what we are doing, we are taking just input image of size 572 cross 572 cross 1. Means we are taking the grayscale image. On this grayscale image, we are applying convolution operation. And uh, by applying the convolution operation, we are getting 570 to 570, 570, and 64. Uh, like if you are applying the convolution operation, then there is a uh, by formula also we can calculate uh, like if this is an image size n cross n, and filter size is uh, f cross f, then output size will be n minus f plus one. So n here is 572, filter is three. So 572 minus 3 plus 1, so it will be 570. So 570 cross 570 will generate as output. And there are 64 number of filters. So this will be 572 cross 572, sorry, 570 cross 570 cross 64, because we have a 64 number of filters. Same way, we can apply uh, one more convolution operation of same filter size, then we will get 568 cross 568 cross 64. Now, after applying this convolution operation, we need to apply this max pooling operation. Max pooling, pooling uh, reduce the size in half, so it will make it 284 cross 284, again 282, and again 280. So like different convolution operations we are applying, just we are getting this 280. So this process will continue until unless we are coming up to here. Now, here we detected a good amount of features, but we have reduced the size of image. So we need to go, uh, go at the original image size. So for original image size, we need to perform the reverse operation than this one. So like we are applying that this transpose convolution, uh, uh, we are applying this convolution operation, then transpose, uh, max pooling operations, we are going, uh, or we can say up, uh, up convolution operations, we are going to apply and we are finding the output, uh, like final output here. Now, here you can see there's a middle, there's a one line. This is called the skip connection. A skip connection, like in conventional neural network, we are going to lose uh, many features in between. So 
to reduce that limitation uh, to overcome this uh, limitation we are choosing this skip connections so skip connections means we are directly comping uh, some features from input to this uh, output direct uh, here so like we will not lose uh, much information now uh, there is a method uh, based on the unit this is called the multiplanar unit model. This uh, model is generated in University of Copenhagen. One of the PhD scholar has uh, like proposed this model, and this is uh, one of the famous uh, uh, model lots of people are using. So what is the beauty of this model? We can directly apply the 2D unit model on this 3D data set. So this is the brain image. In this brain, brain 3D, 3D uh, brain image, uh, MRI uh, brain image. So from this 3D image, what we are doing, we are extracting several 2D images from different planes. Different planes means from different dimensions, we are going to extract the planes. So like we are selecting this one, this direction, direction from this direction, like this. So this example is for six number of planes. But uh, like Matthias uh, has uh, done the experiment for three planes, for one plane, and for nine planes also. So for if you're talking about the six planes, then he has extracted the 2D image from these six planes. So uh, like from on this 2D images, uh, like he is going, then he can apply directly, he can apply this unit model. And uh, after this unit model, he's going to generate the segmented result corresponding to each uh, generated planes, each generated 2D planes. Now, we have given 3D image as an input, but uh, like we want the output in the same way. So like Matthias has applied the fusion model and this one has been generated. The same uh, model I have also proposed in my work. So I'm also going to communicate uh, the advanced version of this method. So uh, like if you, see, if you want to see the detail of uh, this uh, model, like how from how from like different dimensions, it is going to extract the 2D images. So these are the dimensions, axis, like axis from these axis, uh, it is going to extract the images. And like this is a particular single dimensions, like in this way, like we are going to extract the image like this. And if you want to see all the dimensions, then we can say like we are going to extract the 2D image in this way. If you want to see uh, like uh, detail of a particular image, then this is the input image and this is the true ground truth. But how Matthias has done, uh, like uh, he had uh, generated the output from six different views and this uh, he has fused that model and generated the result then uh, like he compared this true production to the this predicted result so this we we can apply the multiplanar model now we, uh, like purpose of this talk is to how we can start our research in the medical imaging so just i'm giving you the idea how like you can uh, going to start uh, your your career or your research in a medical imaging field. So this is the second uh, model uh, based on the machine learning. So like people, how people are using the different architecture uh, like in different, different way. So like this is the input image. In this input image, we are going to apply the VGG-19. Earlier I told you uh, like transfer learning. So here we are using the pre-trained model VGG-19. So uh, this VGG-19, uh, the output of this VGG-19 is given uh, in the ASPP. This ASPP generates the feature in multiple resolutions. So uh, like after generating the results, uh, then it is going in the decoder side. So encoder air printing like this one, if you see this unit architecture, this is the encoder part, and this is the decoder part, fine. So here also, like this encoder is uh, taken from the VGG-19 and decoder is uh, like decoder block we are performing. So like in decoder also, like we have a different convolution and uh, this different max pooling operations. And we are using this skip connections. Here also we have used this skip connections. We can see this is, this is the skip connections. So in the same way, we have used the skip connection here. Fine. 
Now, uh, like this is the output one. We have generated uh, what uh, this author has extended. He has uh, like used one more uh, unit model, one more unit model after this in a serial uh, of fashion. So like uh, uh, output one uh, will go as an input in this model and like this encoder block, ASPP and decoder block same and output two is going to generate and again it is going to concatenate, concatenate output one and output two here and it is going to generate the final output. So uh, here, like we have a lots of script connection. This one is script connection we are using, and this one is script connection we are using. So we are uh, like reducing uh, the limitations of uh, like uh, feature, uh, like lo losing. Like we are not losing the features here. And this model has been applied on different data set. Like this is one of the poly P data set. This is the output one, this is output two. And same way, like we have applied on other data set. And uh, like this is the improvement of results, like double unit is performing better than this unit. Now, now there is a next work is a called dense inception unit model. The purpose of this work uh, is like how much deep we can go. So here you can see uh, like uh, like in whatever deeper dimension, how much deeper dimension we can go to extract the good amount of features to uh, like improve the accuracy in our medical imaging uh, field. So this architecture is just same like a unit, a structure you can see same like a unit, but we have different blocks here. This one, I like this one. So these blocks are itself a one architecture. So if you are talking about this block, then this is inception residual block. And this is one is the down sampling block, and uh, like this is up sampling block. So if you are talking about the inception residual block, then this one is the architecture of inception residual block. What we are doing here, we are taking as an input and different convolution and batch normalization and uh, like pooling operations we are using. So if we here we are using one cross one convolution to like. Uh, to generate like large number of feature map and uh, like batch normalizations uh, layer we are using uh, to like uh, standardize our data set and we are generating the output. So if you will compare here, like if you put all these operations here, then we can say earlier we have applied only single convolution operation, two convolution operations we are applied. But in place of two conversion operations, here we are going to apply uh, many operations to expect the features. Now, if you see this uh, dense exception block, like dense exception block, you can see this one is a dense exception block. This is also a one architecture, dense exception block, like this one. What we are doing here, we are taking as an input. And again, inception residual block is there, then uh, like bottleneck layer, then again, there are lots of operations we are using. Then this inception residual block is again uh, one new architecture. This is similar to this one, similar to this one, but in place of three cross three convolution, like something we have changed, like one cross one convolution. It depends on the requirement, depends on the problem we have changed. So this one, and now we can see down and up sampling block, down and up sampling block, you can see here, down sampling block, this one, and up sampling block, this one. So these are, are also expanded, like this one, down sampling block, we are using this, we are generating input, and like we are applying the max pooling and other operation, we are generating the output. This is like uh, we are using a max pooling, like we are extending extending the max pooling operation. Fine, and like this one is the up sampling block. So by using this, uh, like you can see how much deep we can go. If you will combine all these architecture in one, then it, this architecture will be very complex. This architecture will be very complex. But of course, we are generating good um, good accuracy. Mm, but uh, limited drawback of this model is like uh, complexity is very high. We need uh, high power uh, computational resources for such types of work. 
and this architecture is uh, uh, applied or this method is applied on this uh, Kaggle uh, data science. So uh, you can see this DIU unit one is the output of this one. And, and if you uh, like uh, see the training and validation accuracy, then uh, like this is the result for training accuracy and this is the result for validation accuracy. So this is all about the methods. And like if you have any question, then uh, you can ask. And uh, of course, uh, hope uh, I hope like uh, I have given you the overview of like medical imaging. How you can start with the medical imaging? If you have any question, just be please feel free to ask. Thank you so much. I have done. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Yeah, audience, if you have some question, the chat window is open. Meanwhile, Dr. Sandeep, can you uh, explain the, uh, the purpose and uh, what are the new techniques which are coming up for cooling operations? Coming up for cooling operation? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, in max, uh, first of all, I start with the purpose. Max cooling operation is not related to the accuracy of a model. Yes, uh, like many people confused with the max pooling, they, they are telling like we are improving the accuracy with max pooling, but no, max pooling is just to reduce the complexity of a image. Suppose we are taking a uh, 512 cross 512 image, mm -hmm. then uh, no, not 512, just we are taking 4000 cross 4000 image. The resolution of this image is very high. So if we are applying some operations using 4000 cross 4000, then we need high power uh, for computation, like we need high power of GPU. Then uh, it, it, it is not possible like every organization can afford for those uh, GPUs. In that case, max pooling came into the picture. Just once we are applying the max pooling, then it will reduce the size 4000 cross 4000 to 2000 cross 2000. If you are applying two times, then again 1000 to 1000. Then, like we are reducing the complexity using the max pooling operation. Now, I explain this dense inception block. In this dense inception block, what we are doing, like we are reducing the size as well as just we are applying some other operations also, by which, like, we can get some important features uh, like in max pooling directly applying the max pooling and then we are reducing the features directly we are taking maximum value from particular size of window in that case some important features might loss so to like to save those types of features we are extending that max pooling operation just like in a dense instruction block so we will not lose those types of things. Yeah. thank you we have a uh... One attendee, Krishna Patel, he has, yes, he's praising that very informative session. And he has a question related to satellite imaging. So uh, he would yeah, like to yeah, ask. Please ask. I, 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 I did not work much on satellite image, but you can ask. If I can give the answer, then uh, please ask. Yes, Krishna, uh, please. I will allow him to talk, right, sir? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Krishna, you can talk now. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. very good morning. First of all. Yeah, good morning. Uh, yes, sir. it's a very informative session. First of all, and I would have a question like regarding to the satellite imaging. So basically, I'm just uh, you know doing one project. So in that, uh, I need to uh, like detect the objects from the satellite images, and those images are of like ocean images. So mm -hmm. like, uh, yes, and the object I'm uh, targeting, there are the, some different oceans object. But what problem I'm facing is that, that it may possible that in satellite images, the object size is pretty much tiny. Okay, so is there any way that I can detect those tiny objects even uh, like along with this, uh, the larger objects from the satellite images? Like I have already applied this uh, unit and the resonance model, even uh, the CNN algorithm on uh, preliminary results, but I'm unable to fetch those tiny objects or detect those tiny objects. So like, so, like get... yeah, so what size of filters you have applied in this unit? Uh, like in a CNN algorithm, sir, are you asking? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, sir, I have applied the filter of that is a 14 by 14. So that is the initial filters I have applied. 
Okay, so this is the main problem. Like uh, you are talking about the tiny object size and you are applying the 14 cross 14 uh, filter size. Ah, uh, yes. That is too huge. Like uh, this is the large filter size. So like you, you know the concept of filters, like uh, if we have a large size of object, like we need uh, to yes, detect yes. elephant, we uh, need yes, to detect yes. the elephant from the image. Uh, then yes, we can yes. apply 14 cross 14 or 20 cross 14. Uh, yes, 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 but yes. if you're talking about a tiny image, then we need to go for a smaller filter size, three cross three or five cross five. No, sir, like that's that. also, I have done that, uh, but I'm mm -hmm. unable to detect those, you know, objects. Basically I have done this uh, object detection on the ship. So I, I'm trying to detect those vessels or different categories of it and ships. But uh, I just received the accuracy that is of 89% and it's just because that I'm unable to uh, detect those small ships or the vessels, which has been already present in the image. And how many filters you have used? Uh, like total number of filters on this each layer. Yeah, in a particular layer, uh, how many filters you have used? Like 128 filters, 256 filters like that? Uh, yes, 128 in each layers. So did you try to increase the number of filters? Oh, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I even try to go with the 256, but that's again, I'm not able to do that thing. Okay. And uh, like this tiny object are similar, like color of this tiny object are similar to nearby area? Uh, color, I mean to say, uh, sorry, sir, you mean to uh, say that? Like this intensity of this tiny object, is yes, similar yes. to nearby area? Uh, yes, exactly, sir. Exactly. Yeah, so like there may be a problem related to that one. Uh, okay. Like, uh, yeah, because uh, like how it is going to classify? It is classifying based on the intensity values, right? Okay, okay. So like intensities are going to match. He don't know. Model don't know this is a tiny object or this is something else exactly. or something else. It is exactly. detecting based on the intensity. So it might okay. be possible uh, like... So try to normalize your image or like try to uh, like increase the resolution. Uh, uh, we can say like uh, mapping, feature mapping, like try to map the feature in other dimensions like that. So you can some differentiate, like try to enhance the contrast of okay. image. So you can, you can like a little bit differentiate uh, between the object. So it might be possible in that case. Uh, okay, sure, sir, I'll try. Because my motto is that uh, I'm just trying to detect those objects uh, uh, for the surveillance purpose. For the ocean yeah. monitoring purpose, I'm trying to detect those objects. But for this, I, I need to detect all the objects, whichever is present in the image. So. And that's why I'm failing to detect this tiny object. But however, I'll apply your solution, whatever you say that uh, renormalization. Yeah, yeah. Anything. Because in machine learning or in deep learning, there is no fixed formula. Like I can say, just apply this formula, you will get the correct result. Exactly. So that we need to like do the trial and, and error kinds and of error. things. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Fine. And yes. it, it specifically depends on a particular problem. Problem to problem, it vary. And right. in addition to this, you can see uh, my uh, research paper. I've also done one work for uh, a small object detection for visual surveillance only. Okay. So it is not related to machine learning, deep learning. This is my old work, but you can take an uh, idea from that one. Uh, right? Sure, sir. Would you please share the link of the same? I'll just. Yeah, I, I, I will share. If you send me the one mail, uh, then I will share uh, my paper uh, to ah, you. Fine. Sure, sure sir. I'll, I'll send an email to you. Greetings. Yeah, yeah. You please, please. please. Uh, yeah, share me this so I can, it, it can help solve this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any Mr. other questions? Yes, we are waiting for some other questions. Okay, meanwhile, Dr. Sandeep, what are the future challenges? I mean, what are the new research areas which are coming up in this sector? Yeah, so uh, like if you talk about the medical imaging, then uh, like... Yes, of already... course, this is your research area. So I am, I'm trying to ask from your research area only. Yeah, yeah. So like in the medical imaging, lots of work has been done, but... Uh, uh, like uh, in future, lots of uh, tasks are still uh, uh, required to do. Uh, just like I right now, I'm working on knee MRI segmentation. So if we will talk about the knee MRI images, 
Then in this near MRI image, there are seven to eight cartilages. Means seven to eight classes are there, like tibia, uh, fibial cartilage, fine, and medial tibial, lateral tibial, like that. So in that particular cartilage, there is one problem. This one one fibula cartilage, it will take an MRI image of this fibula, uh, like uh, this particular knee. So uh, like uh, uh, taking capturing MRI image means. We are taking this 3D image uh, uh, from different different directions. So, if radiologist is going to capture the image from any of the dimension, he is not going to detect the fibula cartilage picture uh, like uh, in an accurate way. It is hidden from other classes. So, in that case, whatever method we are going to apply, it is not generating the correct. Prediction for that particular fibula cartilage. This is one of the main challenging problem in this knee MRI segmentation. So a lot of people are working on that one. Different different methods like they are trying to apply to detect uh, accurately detect the disease from this fibula cartilage. So this is one of the challenges. And the same way, in, uh, same way, uh, like uh, if you talk about the brain tumor, right now this is mean, the brain tumor, the most popular disease in the children. Uh, and in this brain tumor also like there is a problem uh, like in the children uh, mind is not much developed in the earlier age so in that case it will be difficult to find uh, the particular disease or particular mind where we need to contact uh, and uh, others are also there early detection of this kind of things are uh, possible yeah and uh, prostate uh, prostate cancer is also one of the disease uh, most popular second most popular cancer in america this is a prostate cancer so what is the problem this prostate cancer this surrounding area is similar of the color just like one person asks the question similar color near to the object so in the prostate cancer also like it's a similar color near to area and it is very difficult to detect the particular uh, point So we have no other question, I believe. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we would like to end now. And on the behalf of LBF management, students, staff, thank you very much, Dr. Sandeep. Here we have two Dr. Sandeep today. <laughs> so <laughs> the speaker, uh, Dr. Sandeep, I'm really obliged that we that you invited, we accepted the invitation for a talk, and we look forward for some other sessions as well. As you are going with your research development, we will stay in touch through our social media channels and we will see that when we can arrange a new session from your side. Thank sure, you very much. Sure, sir, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. Audience, thank you very much for joining today. Stay tuned till the next webinar comes, uh, comes up. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.